start out? You want to start? I'll start. Uh, or we can continue with the music. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 15. We are now going to get into the part of the show where we just talk about whatever happened this week that we found interesting. And this week, that was movie trailers. We found that interesting about 30 about, minutes ago. <laughs> well, I, okay. Chris only just found them interesting. He didn't know they happened. I found them interesting all over the weekend and now through today. And now we're going to talk about them. So first, I said we're going to talk about how not to do a movie, how not to do a trailer. Mm-hmm. So there's this movie coming out in May called Tomorrowland. It stars George Clooney, loosely based on Tomorrowland in Disney, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Um, the movie seems interesting enough. It's PG. Yeah. For a PG movie, it seems pretty interesting. It seemed interesting for the first half the of the The first trailer. part of the trailer was done really well. Uh-huh. Um, if they had stopped... There. There. Good. You know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the trailer, I don't want to spoil it for you, but there's a scene where they're running through a house, and right before they leave the house, I feel like is where it should have stopped, basically. Definitely. Yeah. And then it should have cut to the thing he says at the very end, where he says, you want to see Tomorrowland? Here it is. That's where it should have ended. At the just a black screen. It should have blacked yeah, out yeah. as right as they were leaving the house, right before they left, mm. even I mean, and then gone to that last part. They might have. And been... then the trailer would have been up in the category of, of what's how to do a decent trailer. I think they should have done a quick cut throughout the entire house, not showed the whole house scene. Well, yeah, you'll see. I, it you'll see have it. Cut a little more. Been a little bit more like um, the Taken trailer, I think. More jagged. Yes, more uh, District Nine. Yeah, even trailer, District Nine, even District Nine would have been a good example. Um, not because the movie itself looks particularly terrible. It's PG, so you know if you're comparing it to the likes of even a Batman movie, mm-hmm. it's going to seem a little light, hearted, like you know. Yeah, it does seem kind of light. Um, but the target audience is probably it's probably perfect for the target target audience. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. The trailer just gives away too much. It's just it shows too much. Yeah. And I really just feel like it just shows too much. The initial announcement for the movie was super vague. It was interesting. And then this trailer comes out and it's just... I don't, I don't I'm just... It didn't give me... An, it wasn't edifying. I was really excited. And then as it goes on, like, I've seen so much of this movie now. I don't... I, I feel like I just know what's yeah. too much of what's going to happen. And it's only, what, two minutes and 20 seconds, something yeah. like that. It was not super long, but I just felt like it showed too much. So that's really how we feel like you shouldn't do a trailer. Just don't show too yeah. much. There's another movie like that too that we reviewed. There's a lot of movies that do that now. I feel like it's just, it's really sad actually. I love movies. I love going to the movie theater and watching movies. I love watching trailers for movies because mm. I love how excited they get you. But I hate when they show too much yes. stuff. We've got two good movies, or we got two bad trailers that show too much. we got two good trailers that show enough to not spoil anything. Exactly. So the next one was Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Yes, Jurassic World mm-hmm. was the next one that we were talking about. Now it's a decent trailer. It is a good. It trailer. definitely isn't um, as bad as Tomorrowland. It, at least the whole time you're excited. It doesn't feel like it's as long, even though it's about the same length. Mm-hmm. Um, the acting in the movie is a lot better, just because of the. It's Jurassic Park, so people are probably gonna be a little bit more lenient on the acting, anyways. Um, again, did you see the first trailer for Jurassic World? I didn't. Okay. The first trailer for Jurassic World was great. It would have been up with uh, Batman vs Superman and the scale that we're doing here. This one, it doesn't give away too much of the plot line because uh-huh. it's Jurassic Park. The yeah. plot's pretty well known what's going to happen. That's exactly a what the is was. going to attack people. I mean, I, I that's think... a given. So. In the first trailer when they showed that, that's fine. Yeah. Because everyone knows that's what's going to happen. Everyone so they're trying knows. to build up the hype for this new dinosaur. Okay. I think, I think honestly, if they were to just, hey, this is our new park, boom, right. this is what it is, and then cut it, because everyone knows what's going to happen. Exactly. So just leave it so bland, or not bland, but so exciting, and then have people guess what's going to happen. Right, kind of, um, like more, the first teaser really did that. It opened up, and it's like, hey, Jurassic Park's reopening back on the original mm-hmm. island, and the dinosaurs are roaming around, and instead of jeeps, we got these cool rolly glass balls, and 
look, we got Chris Pratt because he's a big star right now. Mm -hmm. And we got this other lady that I don't know who she is, but that's cool. And um, it kind of alludes to what's going on, but mm -hmm. you never really see exactly. anything except for some pterodactyls or whatever they're calling them these days. But so what? They were in all the other movies also. You see people running from something, which, so what? That's Jurassic Park. It happens in all the other movies also. It was great. This trailer comes out. You see the new dinosaur. You see them talking about it, explaining why it exists, mm -hmm. why... It, it just... It didn't give away so much of the plot that it, it ruins the movie, but... It did give away more than I would like to see still. It's kind of like how the Lord of... I think this trailer should have been kind of like how the Lord of the Rings... Not the Lord of the Rings, but the Hobbit. Uh, the second Hobbit movie? Yes. How, how you know, at the end of it, you only see the, the coin move, and then the yeah. eye, and you're like, what is this? And or then it cuts. like in a Cloverfield, where you never saw the monster, really. Do you have that movie? I do. Can I borrow it? Absolutely. I need to review Wait, this. Wait, do you have a Blu-ray player? I do. Okay, good job. Oh, that's right. We do have it on DVD. Okay. We have that Perfect. movie on DVD and on Blu-ray. Ah. Because we bought it for Rachel one time when I was visiting, and she bought it for me on Blu-ray for, like, Christmas. Correction. I already had it by the time you came. Boom. Now I can borrow it, and they won't lose it. Okay. Dang. Anyways, but Cloverfield, or even better, Super 8. Super 8's Super how you do. Exactly. Super 8's how you do a monster movie trailer. You saw nothing. The whole movie was good until the end. My my particular it, choice. Yeah, it was a it left a little to be desired. A Godzilla, great trailer. Uh huh. Um, Terrible movie. No, actually, the new Godzilla movie was actually pretty good. Okay. It wasn't. It was. It was more like a Pacific Rim. Okay. Kind of the the pacing of it, maybe. It wasn't like a Godzilla movie, which is Godzilla of all time. It actually had like a story. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was slow at parts, but I enjoyed it. Uh, Pacific Rim also was good. It had a good trailer. It showed you what you wanted to see. Giant robots fighting giant monsters. Didn't give away anything, but it showed you what you wanted to see. Jurassic Park showed you what you wanted to see, and then a little too much. That but right only there, a little. That right there was just right in the middle. I, I guess we put it right in the middle. It was a good trailer, right. but it just was, again, too much. It was just a little bit... It, it wasn't even like the, the things they said was too much. They just showed too much showed visually. way too much excitement. But on the other end, you know... Now not, get into how you should do it. Definitely. So how to do a good teaser trailer. We've got Tomorrowland. Okay. Not yeah. the best. Then we got Jurassic World. Better. We're going to get into the better We're stuff now. We're getting into the great the, stuff. The, the, the greats. We're going to start... Batman vs. Superman. Definitely. Dawn of Justice. Now, you haven't seen that trailer before I never, showed you. I've never seen this you trailer. You haven't seen any of these trailers no. before I showed you. And I didn't say what... Well, I guess I kind of showed them to you in a specific order, mm -hmm. but I didn't really tell you my thoughts on them until you saw them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you saw this, and what did you think about it? This uh, was a very good trailer. Honestly, uh, it reminded me of Man of Steel's trailer. It, you know, it showed a good amount, but you didn't know how the story began. You didn't know which, take the, which way they were going to take it um, and who he was. Mm -hmm. And this one just shows... Base, pretty much all it shows is what Superman means to everyone now. Right, it, it picks up, the, the, the talking kind of picks up right where Man of Steel left off, where a lot of the people were like, he's our savior, he's going to save the world, and a lot of the people were like, go back home, you're a freak, you're an mm -hmm. alien, we don't want you here. Mm -hmm. There's um, a statue they've erected. Um, this might be some spoilers if you haven't seen the trailer yet. It's just a trailer. We it's won't just classify, a trailer, we won't classify so, the spoiler. Yeah, I don't know. But... Oh, there's a statue they've erected of him that looks like it may have been knocked down. Um, there's some spray paint on it that says false god. Um, and then it cuts to Ben Affleck, who's playing Batman. Bruce Wayne, Batman. And you hear someone talking. That's not clear who it is. Um, Brunson, on their podcast, he thinks that it's Alfred, maybe, talking to Bruce Wayne about Superman and about people. Anyways, he says some stuff. He looks, and you see he's looking at the bat suit, which looks old. Um, it looks different than mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan's Batman, yes. which is good. It needs to look different. It needs to be its own Batman. Mm -hmm. Because Batman vs. Superman is based on a much older Batman. Okay. And so it needs to look different. 
Now, what did you think of the bat suit when you saw him wearing it? I like it. I'm just having a little bit of trouble. Uh, I don't know. I really wasn't involved in Batman or the Dark Knight uh, until probably the Dark Knight came out. You know, I, so movie. I mean, you might think Adam West is the Batman, or I know. think David Conroy is Batman, okay. who voiced him in the animated series. Who, by the way, in the trailer, there's a point where someone yells something out about. I was in the middle of one of the voice sequences. I can't remember exactly what it says, but it sounds exactly like Batman does in the animated series yelling mm -hmm. something at Superman. I don't know if that's just me picking that up or yeah, if that's intentional. I, it might be, you know, it might be. It just, you know, I, I've got problems in, uh, you know. Now your problem, I guess, is Batman versus Superman specifically about yeah. how they fight. Well, I don't, it's not that. I think it's just their, I, I guess I've got to get used to Ben Affleck. I, I just, like for me, I think Pierce Brosnan is James, James Bond. Bond. That's James what I, Bond. that's where. That's where I grew up. You know, my parents grew up with Sean Connery, you know, and that's where I think. And then Sean people Connery who are younger than me James think Bond. Daniel Craig is, you know, so it's just where we all start off and what we think. Now, let's get one thing clear first. Off. Sean Connery was a great James oh, Bond. Oh, he really is. But if you say James Bond, I picture Chris Bronson. Always. That's now, if I you think. ask me who my favorite James Bond is, I wouldn't necessarily say Chris Bronson. Would you say Sean Connery? I think I would say Sean Connery, then Pierce Bronson, then Roger Moore. Okay. Actually. No, I think I would say him in that order. And then the guy that did the one-off movie for his Her Majesty's Secret Service or whatever mm -hmm. that one was, the one-off that he did. Mm -hmm. And then I would... Kill. Was that Timothy Dalton? I that think it was Timothy it? Dalton. Mm -hmm. He just did the one movie. It was Her Majesty's Secret Service or something like that. Or Her Eyes Only or something like that. I can't remember what it was called. So you wouldn't necessarily say that Daniel I think Craig I would say Daniel Craig... Is the lowest? Is the lowest, but not because I think he does a bad job. Just Honestly? He, his, yeah. I, he does a great job. He does a really it's good great. job. It's great. They're good movies. I just put him at the bottom because I like the other ones so, so much, much more. Mm -hmm. It's not because he did a bad job, honestly. He, they're really good movies. It's just... So you're back to Ben Affleck. Affleck. You just don't see him as Batman. Not yet, I guess. No, uh, he was in Argo, right? That was Ben Affleck. Yes. And he, but Argo was good. Did mm -hmm. you see Argo? Was yeah, I had no issues with Argo. Argo was great. Was great. Um, ben Affleck, The Town. That was Ben Affleck as the well. Right? I, I still need to see it, but I I, I remember that coming out you yeah. know, three or four years ago. Uh, he's definitely he's a great actor. He's a great um, actor. Cleaned up his act from his early days mm -hmm. when he was doing movies that are questionable at best, mm -hmm. and the not the content, but just the production values of them and the writing, mm -hmm. which I guess is the content. But uh, he definitely the town was good. Argo was good. I guess we'll see what happens. I think he's going to be good. I'm really excited. I like the way the suit looks. I like the way he kind of stumbles out from that wreckage in the one scene. Mm -hmm. I like the way that Superman is flying up above him and the lightning. And it's the perfect amount of teaser. It shows you what you want to see. Superman is it's still right where they left off him. And it's still mm -hmm. half the world loves him. Half the world hates him. Um, the news doesn't know what to make of him. The people don't know what to make of him. Um, and then it cuts to, to Batman's point of view, where he doesn't know what to think of him, because Batman's whole thing is justice, basically, yes. not, um, right. it's right. justice. It's justice. It, it, you know, and sure, he's a vigilante, and that's questionable, and he knows it, mm -hmm. um, if you believe the whole Dark Knight saga as far as the way Batman thinks, which is pretty accurate, I think. He knows that... He is kind of a contradiction in the sense that it's justice, but he's a vigilante. He's not really part of the law. But because of that, he's able to do things like take the fall for Harvey Dent mm -hmm. or, you know, just whatever. And it's interesting to see the way he, the trailer is kind of, at starts out, he doesn't know what to think of Superman. Mm -hmm. But then the next scene when you see them together, he clearly can see that Superman doesn't know what to think of Superman. And that's where it cuts. We see Superman and Batman in the rain, and Superman is flying. He's flying, you know, flying, you know 20, smashes 25 Smashes down to the ground. Batman says some words that are very well thought out, I think. This is good. This reminds his me of the video His voice is... Uh, what do you think of his voice for Batman? Good. I thought uh, it was good. It, it wasn't as... I think, you know, The Dark Knight, I think they did way too the much. The Dark Knight it was, was a little too growly. Like, I think everyone agrees. Yeah. This one was just right there. This was there. perfect because it had that, he's old, so you can tell the suit has some sort of application that mm -hmm. he's doing. 
because he's older, so his voice can't yes. project as well. So the suit's obviously doing some sort of amplification to his okay. um, amplification to his voice. It's amplifying it, but it's it's a good amount. It's not making it hard to understand. It has a nice sound to it. I'm ready. I'm excited for it. Um, unfortunately, it's not coming out until next year. Yeah. What, is it going to come out in May like everything else? Uh, it'll probably be May or June would be my guess. Okay. Now. Oh, are you done with that? I'm sorry. I am done. I, done I'm just ready to move on to this next one. Okay, so the next one. And we got, we got some time left. So, coming out this year. And this is how you should do a teaser trailer. Now, to be fair, it's Star Wars. And to be fair, they have a lot of hype already surrounding them, and the story's already well known. So they kind of get a buy on. They don't have to really show any story because everyone knows it's gonna either be really good or really bad. But they still. And since it's J.J. Abrams, and the last two Star Trek movies were really good, everyone's just assuming it's gonna be done really well. It has a very strong fan base, regardless if it's gonna be bad or good. Now it's Star Wars, so all you have to do for a good Star Wars trailer is have. The Star Wars fan, the the music from Star Wars: A New Hope that plays on attachment, you know, it gives you the chills. It's just that perfect music um, that they use on like every Star Wars trailer, basically. Uh, once that starts playing, half half of the world is already like, okay, I'm ready, let's go. They don't need to see any of the movie. No. They're just like, oh, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, I'm in. The rest of the world, they watch the trailer, pan it across, and we're gonna completely just spoil this trailer. Sorry. But you've probably already watched we it. We can't spoil the movie. I can't we're just spoil this trailer because everyone's probably already watched it. Yes. Who cares? Now, it pans across. You see a speeder way off in the background. And then there's a crashed X-Wing and a crashed Star Destroyer. Now, me, I'm already like, I don't. that's all I needed to yeah. see. And we hear Luke Skywalker's voice. And then it cuts and you hear the lines from Return of the Jedi where he says, The Force is strong in my family. And then it cuts to the burnt up mask of Darth Vader. It says, My father has it. Now... I didn't notice this the first couple times I watched this trailer, but I noticed it this last time when I watched it with you. After he says, my father has it, there's like this weird echo mm -hmm. of like kind of a whispery voice. It's not really like his voice echoing, it's like a whispery... It's the force. Like the force, basically. Yeah, it's weird. I didn't notice it the first couple of times, and I noticed it this last time, I was like, whoa. And so I thought maybe it was just after Darth Vader yeah. says, my father has it. And then it cuts to a picture of a robot arm reaching out from a cloak, touching R2-D2, who says, I have it. Assuming that's supposed to be Luke. That's got to be Luke. It's got to be what they're implying. Then it cuts to another scene where you see someone handing a lightsaber to someone else in a tunic. It says, my sister has it. Probably implying that that's Leia. And then it says, and you have it. And then it cuts to the rest of the trailer. Who is that, his son? Exactly. It's so who be. is the you have it? Was Luke married in this movie? He's supposed to have been a hermit for the last. Years, well, right? now your strong fan base would know that he did get married and have a son, right? But now, underneath, you know everything. But all the whole stories. expanded universe has been reset. When mm. Star Wars bought it and they started this whole build up to the Force Awakens, the whole expanded universe that existed they put aside and called it Legends, mm -hmm. and it all still exists as a legend, basically. So what they're saying is some of it might still be true, some of it might just be that of legend. Which we'll find out. Which we'll find out. So, Mara Jade no longer technically exists anymore. Okay. Uh, Han and Leia's kids technically don't exist anymore. Did they even really get married? Don't know. Uh, the good news is that means Chewbacca is still alive. Yes. Because he died in the New Jedi Order and that basically ruined the whole series for me. Uh, things like Shadows of the Empire unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, which is too bad because that was my favorite Expanded Universe story. Good and bad, basically they've reset the whole expanded universe because they wanted to make sure that J.J. Abrams and his team had somewhere to go with the new movies, and they wanted to make sure they're building up to it, they could make new stories going into it. Mm. Um, I'm excited about it because I think that they're going to do a good job with the movies. Um, so the other theory, oh anyways, the rest of the trailer first off. Then it cuts to the new actors, um, the girl who she just looks like she's just a wanderer kind of. And then the guy that you see, he's in a Stormtrooper costume. Mm -hmm. And then later on, he's not. Um, I think it was confirmed at Star Wars Celebration that he is a Stormtrooper. 
but they wouldn't say exactly why you see him without his helmet, without his whole armor on. He's a, he, might, he might be a rogue star. I trooper. think he's a stormtrooper who's struggling with, with the Empire since the fall of the mm-hmm. Emperor. Um, and I think this movie's going to kind of see him kind of break away from the Empire. The Imperials, what's left of the Imperials in the last 30 wow, years. Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. The new Stormtrooper costumes look amazing. The new TIE Fighters look awesome. The new uh, X-Wing pilot costumes look great. And then, of course, the Millennium Falcon still looks exactly like the Millennium Falcon. It's beautiful. At the end of the trailer, you see... It blasts into a... Uh... It blasts through like some crashed wreckage. Cl- I mean, just classic Star Wars scenes. And then you hear... Han Solo say, Chewie, we're home. And it cuts to Han and Chewie standing inside the Millennium Falcon and it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. and then it just says, Star Wars The Force Awakens. And I was excited. Yeah. And I watched it many times since. And that's how you should do a teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. The, literally, the only new dialogue was Han saying, Chewie, we're home. Yes. All the other dialogue. Luke's whole monologue was from Sorry. Return of the Jedi. Of the Jedi. It sounded like it was re-recorded um, mm-hmm. in a new voice. Mm-hmm. So I think that that was probably Mark Hamill mm-hmm. now saying it. But the other theory is that that may not be Luke who's talking. It may be whoever one of the new characters is okay. talking. It sounds just like him, though. Personally, I think it's Luke. It's his dialogue it's yeah. exactly from Return of the Jedi. I think whoever he's talking to is the girl main character probably mm-hmm. saying that she also has the force not necessarily that they're related in any way yeah just that she also has this power mm-hmm. so i think it's kind of a play on his telling that to leia and we're trying to jedi and him now telling it to this new character who is interested in the force so kind of how obi-wan introduced luke to the force mm-hmm. so um let me ask you this hands down would you think the Batman v Superman or the Star Wars in play of not giving enough information but still making it look good. Which one's better? I don't want to be biased. I, mean, I just I don't. I, it's really hard for me not to be biased about this because I actually it's really easy because I love Star Wars yes. and I love Batman. Uh, probably two of my favorite franchises as far as mm-hmm. those kind of things go. Right. Uh, Star Wars is easily my favorite movies. Batman is yes. easily my favorite superhero. Yes. Uh, Batman v Superman. I, I don't care for Superman that much. I don't hate him as much as I used to, but I just don't care for him. I'm excited for Batman v Superman because I feel like they're really going to handle it well. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm going to say. I think the Star Wars teaser trailer is a perfect teaser trailer. Yes. It didn't give away any of the plot. Um, little nuggets of what's going on without ruining anything. Like That stuff could have been major plot points and you would never know. Yes. Him, him, her helping them up those could have been two scenes spliced together, or it could actually be that scene. Mm-hmm. It could be a major plot. I mean, even Han and Chewie stepping back into the Millennium Falcon saying we're home, does that mean the Millennium Falcon's been piloted by someone else for the last mm-hmm. few years? Does that mean they're home? Like, you know, who knows? What does that mean? What I mean? It's It was not so. But a lot of movies don't have that luxury because Star Wars has such a huge fan base. Different it's stories. so well known. Yeah, so wrapped up together. Just, oh, there's so much. It's a huge treat. I, I think as far as a normal teaser trailer goes for something that's kind of known but not, Batman vs. Superman did a really good job. They built off of what's known as far as how Superman's viewed, how Batman's viewed. Um, But even that, a lot of movies can't really do that because mm-hmm. Superman's pretty well known. Man, it still ended with a very definitive, no one knows what to think of Superman. He caused a lot of destruction. In Man of Steel, which this is a sequel of Man of Steel, basically. Mm. So it's going to pick up where Man of Steel left off, not where The Dark Knight Rises left off. So which one would you pick? I'm going to go with Star Wars, just because I like... But it's not, like I said, it's really not fair, because that fanfare really gets me excited for Mm. Star Wars. The TIE Fighters, I mean, just the whole... Everything about Star Wars is so captivating and exciting to me that... It's not fair to say that that's the way to do a teaser trailer because if a movie that was brand new tried to do a teaser trailer like that, it would either go over really well like Super 8 did or it would just go over terrible. Yeah. I, on the other end, I I don't know why. I love Star Wars. You know, I grew that's what I grew up with. Yeah, of course. You know, um, unfortunately, I can't really say that I have a 
favorite superhero, um, but I do like superhero movies. And I got, you know, really involved with Dark Knight, and even though I watch it every now and then. It's not like my favorite movie, but even though I love Star Wars to death, I'm still going to lean Superman v. Batman, uh, how they played out the trailer, even though I'm more excited to Star Wars. The trailer did play out very well. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, for try not to be biased or anything like that, I would pick Superman v. Batman, even though I'm way too excited for Star Wars. I just think they did a But I job. think as far... But you make a good point, though. As far as a trailer goes, um, you would have to say that Batman v. Superman was a better trailer for a movie if you think about a movie that no one knew anything about it was mm -hmm. a brand new movie mm -hmm. because the star wars trailer almost isn't enough say like you replace all those scenes with a different movie sequence mm -hmm. of action shots i say it would either go over really well or really bad super 8 worked out well because they just showed the train crashing mm -hmm. that was basically the only trailer for super 8 yes only thing and then we had you know you had district 9 which was Done really well. You never um, saw the so, creatures. Mm -mm. Chappie was Chappie was done. Chappie was done very well as well. Um, um, and those are all very similar to how Batman v mm -hmm. Superman's trailer was done. I felt like there's not a really lot of movies that do that anymore. Cloverfield, um, its trailer was okay, but the what Cloverfield did that was different was they had a lot of marketing online, a lot of websites dedicated to the build up of the countdowns to the movie releasing, mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff like that. Their marketing was just done mm -hmm. really well. Um, so yeah, we are about out of time, actually. That's a good end right there. We were gonna do some trivia, but we'll have to save it for next. Save week. Save it for next week, you know. We really are. We do good. This Make one half section, man. We just talked about movie trailers, you know, that, which is really exciting. I love movies, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think about those four trailers. If you agree with our ranking of them, if you disagree with our ranking of them, if you feel like we're being too biased towards Batman and Superman and Star Wars. Yeah, Honestly, dude. that that's possible. Um, we might try to put it up on the website too, you know, if you guys want to vote. Uh, we might put... Yeah, comment on the show notes. Yeah. Go to theweeklyflare.com. If we can, if, can we do a multiple or a... Uh, um, you know, um, I don't know if I can get a form set up quick enough. Not a form. The show goes up. See if you can put a tab up there and see if people can pick... You know which trailer they're ready for. Again, right, give them four options. Up, yeah. yeah, put a poll up. We'll put a poll up. There. I'll see if I can get a poll up. If not, just go into the comments though. Leave your comments in there, um, or send us a tweet mm -hmm. or an email. You can find us on Twitter at the Weekly Flare, Instagram at the Weekly Flare, Facebook the Weekly Flare. You can find us on email podcast at theweeklyflare.com. And just let us know what you think about those trailers. We really would love to hear if you think that we're being too biased towards Star Wars and Batman. Or if you agree with how the trailers were done very well. Like we said, we're talking about the way the trailers were presented, not what you think is going to be the best movie necessarily. Mm. And so, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. So, Chris, Definitely. where can we find you on the internet? Um, yeah, I got a Vine. I got Instagram. Uh, it's all fight underscore with underscore heart. Uh, Vine is just fight with heart. Uh, Twitter, never lose heart. Yours are a lot easier, though. Mine's a lot easier. Just go to twitter.com slash James Walter. Or go to facebook.com slash James Walter. I'm pretty sure that's my Facebook yeah. also. Mm. And you can find me there. I'm not on Vine or Instagram or Snapchat or Who's Chat or This Chat or any of those other things. I am on Meerkat and Periscope, but that's just because it like links to my Twitter, so yeah. I just snagged my name. Um, the Weekly Flare is on Meerkat, no. and we're also going to be on Periscope next week. Um, we did Meerkat this week. Thank you for watching. If you watched our Meerkat, I want to say thank you for the random people popping in and out. There's That's right. one with a cat face, and then there's one watching us right now who I don't know who it is, but I want to say thank you for everyone who's That's coming right. in and out. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Next week, like I said, we're going to be on Periscope. We are still recording on Wednesday nights right now, even though the show's going up Thursday night because I play softball. Mm. So until softball's over, we're recording on Wednesday nights. So next week, same time, probably around 8 15, we'll start the stream. And we'll see you there. Thank Otherwise, you. have a good week, and we'll see you again in seven days. Thank you, everybody. Peace.